we're going to learn three different ways to dehydrate sweet peppers. Whole, sliced, chopped, and there may be a couple other ways too, so stay tuned. Okay, my garden uh, probably will not get peppers this year. We've had so much rain this spring that uh, my plants are just not loving it. So when I see a sale for mini sweet peppers, bags like this, worth my time to go stock up on getting a bunch of them to dehydrate. But what I wanted to show you is that you can actually dehydrate these in a few different ways that might be more beneficial to you depending on your circumstance. Now, um, these are all previously washed. They've been washed. They're just ready to go. I'm not going to show you how to wash them because you know how to do that. But uh, all I'm going to do for all of these is just I'm going to take off the end because I don't want the stem end to do any of this. So I'm just going to pull them off. Some of them come off really easily. Some of them take a little bit to get off. Um, and so that we can work with these peppers just like they are. And I'm not going to make you watch me go through all of these, but in a minute, we're going to have a whole bowl full of peppers that are just like this and ready to be used. Um, okay. So here's the thing about dehydrating peppers whole. Oh, see that just came off that. That's going to be what I'm going to show you this way. We'll use this as our example. Usually with bell peppers, you cannot dehydrate them whole so easily or efficiently because their walls are pretty thick. But the sweet pepper, uh, especially these smaller ones, go right in that point of not being able to dehydrate them whole versus being able to. What you want is a pepper that has a real thin wall. Um, like take any of your hot peppers, jalapeno, habanero, um, any of the small chili peppers. Uh, those kind of peppers do really well to dry them whole. Poblanos, all those kinds of things. Uh, when you get into the bigger, thicker peppers like uh, sweet peppers and bell peppers, um, that becomes harder because the walls are so thick that it takes them so long to dry that you're having a hard time getting inside the, the fruit as well as outside like this. So and the cool things about these sweet peppers is that there are so few seeds in it. It's just right there. You're not having to dig out a whole bunch of stuff and it makes it to where these are pretty low maintenance kinds of fruit to dehydrate. All right, so I'm going to get busy here. I'm going to just fast forward through all this so you don't have to watch it all. Okay, now before we get started too, I want to talk about there are so many ways to do this. There is no right way. There's no wrong way. You may choose a different option. And if you have a different way that you like to do these, drop it down in the comments below because that way everybody can kind of see all the options that are available. What I'm going to do is I have taken off the tops of all of these peppers now and a, a variety of them are going to be done whole. But if I'm going to do them whole, what I am going to do is either I can take the top off and leave it open sort of like this is, so that the air gets all in and it dries just like this, okay? You can do it that way, or you can just go through here and just make some slits in the skin because what you're wanting to do is make sure that any of the moisture that's inside of this has a way to escape, or you're gonna run into an issue of case hardening, which is when you dry something too hot or too fast, and it will make the outside of your fruit or vegetable firm up get dry on the outside and make no escape for the moisture that's still on the inside of the, the fruit or vegetable. So your piece of produce may be look dry, it may feel dry, but even if you, uh, even if you condition, you don't always catch it because it may take a little longer than the five to seven days. Uh, you might find about in a month or two down the road, everything's molded because the moisture that's on the inside of this, it never had a means of escaping will now be you know, molding from the inside out. So if you're gonna do them whole, make sure that you go through any of these and just poke into the skin. And I'm gonna leave them whole. I'm not gonna cut the ends off because I like the way it looks when it looks whole and dry. Um, find some smaller ones because I'm gonna do the smaller ones whole. Okay, for some of these also, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut the top off. Um, I can always use those in the mints that I'm gonna do in a few minutes. I can just sort them through there but I'm just gonna pull these tops off. I am not gonna worry about shaking out any of the seeds because right now I am not too chuffed about it. They will come out when you dry, they will just shake right out. So I'm not really worried about this right now. You can easily just pop that out and you're all done. Okay, what time is it kids? It's mandolin time. And what does that mean? Gloves. Yep, you gotta have your cutting gloves because it's necessary. So here we go. We're gonna take a whole pepper we're going to make this go to a quarter inch, okay? 
we want a quarter inch. And all you have to do is just slice. Alright, and what you end up are these little ringlets of peppers. Now, depending on the way your pepper is shaped, uh, see these kind of broke up, some of them broke up, but then here we go. We have some just little ringlets, kind of like you would do with jalapenos. So you do that. Now, next time, because I would have done this before, I'm going to cut that very end off and that will go into the mince. See, I cut the end off and I'm going to just pull out the plug here and see how this works. Usually I do this with my knife, so because I have so many to do, I'm going to try, I'm working on the mandolin the first time. Yeah, it takes a little bit of strength to hold it. It loses its structure kind of when you're doing this. So this is probably best done with a knife depending on how, yeah, depending on how good your your mandolin is and how good your knife skills are so then you also have the option of just walking through and just making the slices yourself because it may take a little extra time yeah but you can still do it now these rings would be awesome on pizza uh, because you can just lay them out on your pizza once they're dried and let it cook. You can rehydrate them first if you'd like. Um, you can do it any way that you'd like. These also would be pretty in a salad just because they're different than um, chunks. I'm going to leave that for the minces. And here's the orange one I've done in. Hey, you can see how these rings, how they look. They're just going to be so pretty on a pizza um, or maybe some other kind of application that you can think of. Look how pretty those things are. Okay, I'm going to finish chopping up some of these uh, and getting the slices done, and then we're going to move on to the mints when I'm done. Okay, let's say you did not have a... Um, a food processor but you do have this handy dandy full star vegetable chopper see I've already been working with it it is I'm using it on the very tiny dice because we're not really big fans of cooked peppers but we like them better if they're orange red and, and yellow versus being green so if I'm going to use them I'm going to use them tiny tiny also makes it easier to blend into a powder uh, because it's just smaller pieces to work with so here's how I do it like I showed you before I cut most of my pieces in half to make it just a little bit easier. There you go. <clears throat> I can do as many pieces as I can fit on there. There you go. Every once in a while the ends of those are a little thick and it makes it a little harder to get through. And this does take a little bit of strength. it can go compared to having to dice by hand. So there we go. I've done two or three peppers worth now, and I've got this little dice. Now something I am gonna warn you about, when you're putting this on your trays, and I'll probably say it again, or I'll, you know, I'll edit one of them, this will stain some mesh trays uh, for your dehydrators. So I would suggest that you use parchment paper when you're loading it, because it will keep your trays from, your mesh from, um, your mesh, I should say mesh, I'm sorry. It will keep your mesh from staining if you care about that do a few more of these and then because uh, I can now do it I'm gonna break out my brand new um, food processor and do the rest of these there we go and I meant to show you this earlier look at all of these beautiful rings they are just so pretty I have never pickled these have you ever pickled regular bell peppers like this what did you think these look so pretty 
using some uh, rewards money, some Kohl's cash and uh, some stuff like that, I got uh, recently got to invest in a food processor, which I've not had before, um, or at least a decent size. I've had some of those little mini ones, but um, I went ahead and did that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take all of my bits and bobs that I worked with today, and I'm going to start chopping these up. That way I have small pieces of peppers that I can use. Um, you can chop these as fine or as large as you want, depending on how you eat them and what you put, you know, what you do with them. I am not bothering to cut off these little green bits because um, there's going to be so few of them. Add another little handful, put the lid on. There we go. Are you ready? I'm ready. First time using it. Here we go. doing it for me. No, nope, it didn't. How cool is that? All right. So if you are doing these for things like adding to any kind of, like if you're using uh, a Cajun Trinity for cooking, or if you just like to have small little bits in your, unlock, in your meatloaf, or whatever you like to do, using that chops them up. Oh, not completely. I see a couple of bigger pieces that will take those out. But look at how fine it gets that. This will dehydrate so quickly. It will rehydrate really quickly. And that will be an amazing way to do this. If you have a lot to do and you like them in small pieces, there you go. Okay, are we ready to get started? All right, I'm going to show you what I'm working through, okay? So, because I know that um, these will stay in my sheets, uh, probably, especially the ones that are cut up the most, I'm going to go ahead and I found some old Teflon dehydrator sheets that are in, that were in my pantry uh, that I had forgotten that I had. They were with my foil and other stuff and I didn't realize that's what they were. So, I went ahead and cut them down to fit my Kasori sheets because uh, I don't want to stain my Kasori mesh any more than the couple of pieces that already are. Uh, and so this will work just fine. And now remember, there are certain sheets you cannot cut down because the fiberglass that's on the inside, uh, especially the silicone sheets, you don't want to spread that, but these Teflon sheets are safe to do. <clears throat> so first what I'm going to do is just go ahead and spread out these uh, the rings. And this is probably going to take a sheet or two. I may not be able to get everything on this first round, but I will still do this. Um, I love these. I think they're pretty, like I've said, like, you know, how many times I've already said through this, uh, they will make great um, additions to like, you know, a pizza topping um, that you can add that you've got in stock that you just throw it on. You can also go ahead and just rehydrate them first. Um, the thing about peppers is, is that when they're dehydrated, they're still raw. So if you're used to having well cooked peppers in something that you're eating, you want to make sure that you give these things plenty of time to cook um, while you're doing something. So either through rehydration uh, with really hot water and then cooking it longer because it's rehydrating still does not cook. It just introduces water back into the, to the piece of produce that you've dried or um, you know just putting on raw. But make sure that you give it plenty of time in the thing that you're cooking that you want to have that, you, that it allows it to actually rehydrate plus cook. Uh, many people are put off by peppers when they've dried them because they put them in, uh, they, you know, they think they're rehydrated, that means that it's ready to go, and when they bite into them, they're like, no, these don't taste good, these are not what I expected. So, here is a tray of beautiful rounds. Can you see that? Look how pretty that is. Okay. Need a couple of loads full, I may have to pull out my Nesco to get the rest of these. All right. I'm not going to pull off the uh, Excalibur because it's too big. So then also what I did with that mash that I did in the uh, mixer, I went ahead and just let it drain for a while because it's going to release a lot of water. So I just set it in a strainer. You can even see here where it's starting to. And I'm just going to pour this out on my sheet and spread it out the best that I can. Now this won't be perfect because there's a lot of it here um, and I don't want to take up a second sheet. I may have to. This is a little too much, I think. Yep, we'll have to do a second sheet. All right, so I'm going to do that real quick so you don't have to watch the mess happen. I'm 
sure you could do this with a fork or a spatula or whatever else you would like to use to make this spread out a little easier. Toss some of those for soup later. Okay, and what you can do is that as these dry more, you can actually come in through with a spoon and, and or whatever you like and mix them while they're drying. They will shrink up some, uh, not a ton, but they will shrink up some. And then you can just keep spreading them so that they don't stick uh, and they can dry better. Do this. I'm gonna actually just kind of do this a little bit. I can spread those out later because I have something else to add to this one. Let's see if we can get these in here. These are some of the last that I had that I thought, you know what, let's just go ahead and do little, you know, strips because maybe that's what you like too. Uh, you may, however you like these, you can make them happen however. It's so easy. Now we're gonna take some of our, our regular dice and throw them in here. Yeah, I think this is gonna be a two dehydrator day. Nesco is gonna get brought out and uh, and used as well. Okay. Spread these out a little more. Now, just like with the smaller bits, I'm gonna you know let these dry for a while, then go through there and kind of mix them around, make sure they're separated. You want to give things some room because you want to make sure that everything gets plenty of air movement around each piece but then as they dry you can move them around a little bit more so i'm going to go ahead and just do that uh, see if i can spread these out just a little bit better okay there's that okay all of our trays are ready to go just want to show you a little quick behind the scenes as i'm starting to take pictures for the blog but um i don't know if you can see this but you can start to see how these have been on for about four hours and already where the holes are. You can see where they're starting to already pucker. The ones that uh, were thicker and a little harder to do are not puckering so well. Um, it's just going to take them longer to go, but you can see where it's starting to work. Here is, this is already dry right here where it's starting to dry off. There you go. So I just wanted you to see a look of what it's like kind of in process, how these are drying. So let's take the tour. On the bottom, the uh, chopped up variety for adding to soups and stews and whatever. Then we have, same thing, diced. There we go. Then right here in the middle are the whole and half and quarters that I put in. And they just barely fit with that tray above so I didn't have to take one out. But it does lift it a bit. They'll shrink after a while. Then here we go with our rings. More of the chopped, and remember that while this looks like it's all close together, I will spread it out as it dries. Then we also have the slices back there, and then one more tray of rings. And then I'm about to load the Nesco and get it going with more peppers. So, to start this, it is 125 for however long it takes. We're just gonna let it go. It's set right now for 29 hours, but it'll take what it takes. I can restart it whenever I need to. All right, here are our trays. The Kasori loaded, the Nesco not loaded, just a couple. And I'm gonna tell you, people ask, the Kasori is so quiet. All the noise that's coming right now is from this Nesco. All right, so in about, some of this stuff is gonna take overnight into tomorrow some of this stuff is going to be just uh, a few days so we'll update along the way and now the cleanup and this isn't the half of it when you have a big project that you've been trying to work on because i did a lot of these peppers try to make sure i got photos of everything all the video of everything and now i have to clean up all right here we go so full disclosure um these have been in their dehydrator for a few days uh, not because they need it. It's because we've had some uh, life things happening in our home that just needed me to be able to walk away. So I'm thankful that with most things, when you're dehydrating them, you cannot over dry them. So these were dry within about eight to 12 hours. Uh, but I just had to leave it here because I couldn't deal with taking care of them at the time I needed to be able to step away. And so here's the result of dried. This was the dried mash. Here is the dried dices. They are all well dried. 
if you drop them on a counter, can you see this? You get a, you'll get a ping instead of a plop because they're dry. Here are the whole, I'll get back to these in just a minute. Here are the first set of rings, more of the mash, the second set of rings, and then here were the extra in the Nesco right there. Okay, now before somebody starts yelling at me about good grief that costs so much to run your dehydrator, uh, in, oh, yikes, I'm just losing, losing rings right there. Uh, in my area, with the cost of electric, my dehydrator only costs about 50 cents a day to run. So I just, in order to save the food and take care of it properly, I just let it run because I was okay with that. All right, so what I wanted you to see now, I keep making a mess, I'm trying to get these back in. Sorry. There we go. So here are the whole ones. They've had about three full days to dry. Um, and here's where we're at. These are, you can hear they're crisp. They are uh, almost dry. Now I'm going to go ahead and say that these probably need at least another half day to make sure they are good and dry. They're not quite crunchy. They're still just a little bit bendy. Um, I would want them drier for storage. And that one's good. Then we have a couple of these that were smaller ones, and then we have lots of really small ones. Then here is the ones done in half, and that one's totally ready. And then, you know, we've got some other slices. So these really, the bigger ones could probably use another day to dry, um, just to be sure, you know, at least a half day. So um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna finish with those while well, I can go ahead and get this video out, but you can see what these would look like when you're finished. They are shriveled up, dry. If you were to crack them open, it would just be hollow. I mean, I can go ahead and just crack this one open right here. This one's just about done. Oh, not with one hand. I can't. I'll do it on the counter. But I just wanted to see what they look like coming out of the dehydrator. So let's move to conditioner. Can you tell that's been my week? That's been my week. So nothing else goes inside here. Uh, there's no moisture absorber. There's no desk compact. You don't put anything in here. What you're looking for is naturally occurring moisture to take care of it if it happens. If you put a moisture absorber in here, it may not absorb enough moisture, but you're thinking it's taking care of it. And then when you go to store it, it turns out that there's actually more in there. Um, so what you want is five days on the shelf, shaking it up like this to see if anything sticks to the walls that can't easily shake off. There's going to be a little sticking sometimes that large clumps don't form and that you don't see moisture around the jar. So next let's get to putting our rings in. Same thing goes with this. Every day, five days, shake it around, make sure nothing's sticking, make sure you see no moisture. If either occurs, then you want to put it back in the dehydrator, dry it some more, and start the conditioning process over. So to store these, they will go in an airtight container, uh, similar volume to what's inside. If you want to put a moisture absorber in there, you can. That way it helps with that whatever ambient uh, moisture is in your room. Um, or if you're going to put this back for long term that you don't want to touch it for a good six months, then you can use an O2 absorber in here, which will take the air out. It does not deal with moisture, but it deals with air. They work two different ways and you can't use them together. So vacuum seal it if you want, O2 absorber if you want, moisture absorber if you want, depending on your situation at home. And then here's how you do those. And so let me show you the, uh, the whole ones just a second. All right. So you want to see the whole ones? This is what they look like. Listen. I hope you can hear that. That's the seed on the inside that I didn't take out because this one did whole without cutting the end open. Um, then we have one that is, I broke one open. Oh, right here you can see what it looks like when it's been dried with the cut, top cut open, which is my preference, okay? Because that way I know this is good and dry and I don't have to put it back in. This is ready to be stored just like it is. Then we have some of the smaller slices. You can see they are completely shriveled. They are dry. Um, it is ready to be 
uh, done with however you'd like to do with it. Now you can smoke these at this point when you're ready to smoke if you couldn't do it ahead of time, uh, which I know a lot of people do. Um, you can do whatever you want with these. You can powder them. Um, you can, you know, however you like to do these. If you'd like to put whole ones into dishes, then there you go. But here are our dried peppers. Now I'm gonna tell you for uh, all clarity, these are gonna go back into my dehydrator for a little while because I know a couple of these, the larger ones aren't quite ready. Um, they still have an, oh, no, that one's good and dry. Um, there's still a little pliability to a couple of these that I would wanna make sure it was taken care of. Uh, and then they're just gonna go to a jar like, like all of these did and be done the same exact way and then stored on the shelf to look really pretty and use down the road. <clears throat> so I hope that I hope that you enjoy walking through this process if you have questions leave them down below there will be a recipe card that you can print off on my website if you just click the link that's in the description box and thank you so much for watching there'll be new videos right here for you to see right there and right there uh, and I will see you again next time happy dehydrating